Hey guys, y'all having a good time? All right, hey, first of all, I want to say Jonathan Evans, you know, is absolutely the man. For me as a creative arts pastor, I've spent most of my time at New Spring Church as a worship leader. And so, I, you know, I just would like to freely admit that certainly in the presence of Jonathan, I'm the dumbest person in the room. But like definitely today in this room, I'm the dumbest person in the room. So I just want to say thank you for being smart, everybody. And uh, you just need to know that all of the people, I mean, basically the full extent of my abilities in math is basically being able to count to four really loudly. You know, like one, two, three, four, you know, and then we get the band going and it's, that's basically all I know about math, right, as a worship leader. So anyway, I'm, I'm really honored to speak to you guys and I feel like God's given me something that's, that I, I feel like God's given me something for us today. And uh, so I'm really, really pumped about it. I want you guys to know that, uh, you know, from, from my vantage point as somebody who's been in ministry for 16 years, you know, kind of the guy who's on stage, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you for what you do off stage, behind the scenes, the unsung heroes that drive the church forward. It is a huge, huge deal. And what you need to know is that your Heavenly Father is proud of you. And so I just want to tell you that. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Okay? All right, y'all. The, the title of this talk today is Luke, I Am Your Father. <laughs> so if anybody is a Star Wars fan, I got a couple of jokes about that, you know, coming. So, like, y'all just get ready. I also like to say welcome to New Spring, or as we like to call it, the Ice Planet Hoth. Because uh, we keep the air conditioning running, like, pretty serious around here. I don't know if you guys have experienced that over the last couple of days. Well, here's the reason why. Because we like to keep the preacher on stage cool and the women on the front row fully clothed. So that's the reason why we keep the air conditioning right. Because we want to see the lost in here, but we don't want to see the law. You know, we don't want to, you know what I'm saying. You guys know what I'm saying. Y'all are picking up what I'm putting down right now? Anybody? Okay. All right. This is great. Hey, so I had all these kind of like silly jokes, you know, planned at the, at the beginning of the talk because... You know, I wanted to make fun of you guys for being nerds and stuff like that and like saying things like, is it dork in here or is it just me? But like, you know, or let me communicate to you in a way that you can understand one zero zero one one zero 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 one one. you know, that kind of thing. But I figured, you know, most, uh, thanks for laughing. I really appreciate that. That's uh, good for my soul. You know, all of those things uh, I, I had, that, but I realized that would be kind of hypocritical because I too uh, originate in Dorkville and uh, I have proof uh, that's my high school senior picture. That is not a picture of Napoleon Dynamite. So relax, everybody. But if you look there, I mean, look, math team. I don't know how I got on there. Mu Alpha Theta, that was like the math club. If you don't know, that's math in Greek, Mu Alpha Theta, right? It's pretty smart, pretty dorky. Okay, anyway, and then at the very end, library aid. I mean, what's more dorky than that? Okay, so these are my people. You guys are my people today. All right. Yeah. I'm just trying to make some connections up here, you guys. Come on, y'all. You guys are awesome. Hey, also, before I get into the Luke, I am your father talk, which I'm excited about, um, and, and this person is, has no idea I'm going to say anything about this, but uh, my, my father-in-law is here today, which I, I'm so, so glad. Brad Meisberg is right here on the, the front row, and my sweet wife is here today, too. This is awesome. But the, uh, I wanted to tell you guys about something just really briefly as a, as a you know, in parentheses, communication often is one of the most difficult things that we face on, on the church world. In New Spring, like the, the biggest gripe in any year-end review is, I wish communication was better. Um, one of the things that, that my father-in-law did, he wrote a book called Balance the Bridge about interpersonal communication and business communication that has helped me kind of analyze how I communicate and how I speak. This book is available on Amazon, Balance the Bridge, Brad Meisberg, a great resource. If you felt like picking that up and going through it, it's a great way to, a great tool to analyze how you're coming across to someone else. And I don't know if any of you guys are like me. I mean, I'm more of an extrovert and maybe have a little bit, you know, easier time communicating. Some of you guys I know might not exactly be extroverts. Any introverts in the house? Anybody? Anybody uh, who finds communicating with servers more engaging than communicating with humans? Anybody? I mean, like, you know, so th this, this resource may be for you. I'm sure I embarrassed the crap out of him by telling him he had no idea I was going to say that, but I just, I just felt like I needed to. Okay. All right, you guys. Here's the thing. We're going to get to work. Luke, I am your father. This is the talk. I, I want to start off with, 
We've got a, a few scriptures that we're going to go into, and we're going to start off with one key statement at the, at the very beginning that I think, if you can get this, this is the most important thing, essentially, from this talk, and we're going we're gonna to land it that way. Before we get into that, I want to open up in prayer, so y'all bow your heads, close your eyes with me, let's go before God, ask for his help in this time, and then we will dive right in. Father, I'm so thankful for you. And for all the men and women in this room, and I ask that we would hear your voice and that faith would be created in our hearts as we hear your word. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the lands, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. And the sorrows of those who run after another God will multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Mm. Bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I've set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure for you will not abandon my soul to show or allow your Holy One to see corruption. For you make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God, let us experience the warmth and the joy of your presence. And as we hear your word, let us hear you whisper something to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, here is the statement. My work isn't about my work. It's about God's work in me. My work isn't about my work. It's about God's work in me. There's something very, very special about working in ministry. There's also something extremely dangerous about it. And we're going to unpack that as we go through all of this. My work isn't about my work. It's about God's work in me. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Point number three. Now, don't freak out anybody. Because I know you guys are all Star Wars fans, and everybody loves episode number four more than they love episode number three, or two, or one, or any of those others. So you guys are good with me. We're going to go backwards in our points today. Point number three, what I want you guys to understand here is that this fill in the blank for you guys, if you're taking notes, point number three, put your job title right here. As you're taking notes, put your job title right here. For me, this would be like creative arts pastor, or whatever my title, worship leader, whatever it is. So... Put your job title there. Number three. So here's the thing. One of the, one of the things that I want to tell you guys in this is that work is a gift for a season. Is a gift for a season. Work is a gift for a season. It's important to have a good perspective about work when you're working in ministry life because work is not just work when you work at the church, right? Work is all the time, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and it doesn't matter if you're in the technology side of it. You are a minister, you are at the church, you are working at the church, your particular role at the church can become a very toxic thing. But... Because it is something that God has called you to do, it's a gift for a season, God has intended for you to be really awesome at it. So it's on us as people who work in the church who are in these skill positions to be extremely good at our craft, to be world class at our craft, to be like awesome at JavaScript and C plus and C sharp and CSS and HTML and all the other things, HTTP. You know, I looked on the internet earlier today and saw what the most popular programming languages were. And so I hope that's connecting with somebody out here. Um, <laughs> But work is a gift for a season. Some, some of you guys, like in the IT world, when you're getting IT requests or like if you're the sound guy at your church or something like that and a little bit of feedback happens because the speaker doesn't know how to use the microphone, everybody turns around and looks at you. They don't look at the, at the guy on stage, right? So all of a sudden you're feeling this heat and this pressure. It's very hard to look at it like a gift for a season. But work, this thing right here that is that is a gift for a season. Turn in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And this passage of scripture is going to be familiar to some of you guys. I've got it right here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. 
starting at verse 12, I perceive that there is nothing better for them, human beings, than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Work is a gift for a season. If you are working at a church in some capacity that interfaces you with, with technology and all the things, that you, I, what I want to tell you is that your skills and your gifts, all of the moments in your life that led you up to this moment, being in that position at your church, all of that stuff is preparation for today's work. And so when you think about your career in ministry, there is no ordinary day. There's no such thing as an ordinary day. Every day when you walk in, it's like God is giving you this present, this gift, this opportunity to be able to do something, and then you get the opportunity to take pleasure in it. And here's the thing. You can't approach your day at work in, as, as toil and paycheck and everything else like that, and when you get there, you might miss this opportunity that you have a loving father who wants to give you something on that day. And taking, another way you can say it is receive. Here's the thing, you guys. Every single day you walk into work with the gifts that you have, with the opportunities that you have, you have the opportunity to receive something fresh and something brand new from God because work is a gift from a season. And I'm going to tell you, there's something deeper underneath it too. We're going to get to that. There's something special about every day. There's no such thing as an ordinary Tuesday. No such thing. Because there's more to the eye than what we can see. And God is at work underneath it all doing things for you and in you and through you, that if you pulled back the curtain and showed you, you would just be able, it would blow your mind. It would absolutely blow your mind. So, you know, when we, when we think about work, we need to have this perspective that work is a gift for a season. Okay, everybody, let's continue. Number two, minister to people. Minister to people second. This is point number two. Obviously because there's this two that's right here. So what I want you to tell, this is very obvious. I realize I said that. That's redundant. You guys are all smarter than me. So cut me some slack. Okay. So minister to people second. As you can tell, we're kind of going in reverse order, but there is a certain priority to this. One of the things that I think is very, very dangerous in high skill ministry work. Y'all hear me when I say this. One of the most dangerous things about high-skill ministry work is that you can forget that it's about people. You can forget that it's about people. You can forget about the thing that God cares about more than anything else in the world, which is people. And I'm going to tell you right now that God has set you apart and put his spirit inside of you to do some very highly technical and very specialized things because he loves the people who come to your church. Are you guys connecting this? It's like work is a gift, but why? Work is a gift for the purpose of building God's kingdom. For the purpose of building God's kingdom. For the, work is a gift for a season for the purpose of building God's kingdom. Turn in your Bibles to Exodus 31. Exodus 31, and we're gonna, I'm just going to read the first 11 verses of this. Exodus 31, 1 through 11. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to set up servers and Wi-Fi systems and to be able to make sure that ACS and Rock and all these other things are running well and work in every craft. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm putting some of your tasks inside of here, but what you see is to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, bronze, cutting stones for setting and carving wood, work in every craft, and behold, I've appointed with him a holy of the son of Ahisamach, I don't know, of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men ability. Remember, work is a gift. I've given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, 
where people are going to meet with God, the Ark of the Testimony, which is going to relate God to people, the mercy seat that is going to be where God and people restore communion after sin. You see what I'm saying? So like all of these things are getting made, these highly specialized things, empowered by the Spirit, given ability and intelligence, all because God loves his people. All because God loves his people. So on that extraordinary Tuesday when you come into work, because it's a gift, What's happening is that God is putting inside of you his spirit and all the ability and intelligence that you need because his love is going out to the people who are going to show up on Sunday, to the staff members who you're going to be able to serve and to help support to do those ministries every single week, all the way through the week. So what I'm telling you is that this thing, this idea that you are a minister to people, that this is like all of you need to feel this. You are not simply the director of operations. You're not simply the IT specialist. You're not simply the sound audio engineer. You're not simply the web manager person. I, I'm, I'm searching for other job titles that might possibly be on your, on your business card. You're not simply that person. You are in the ministry. You are in the ministry. That means that you are a conduit for God's love and grace, the experience of his kingdom, and the stewardship of the mystery of the ages. You, that's inside of you. And God called you out of whatever marketplace thing, whatever training that he put you through, and it stuck you inside the church because he wants to use you to change the world. And for him, the world is as big as an individual person who walks into your church every Sunday. That's, that's his dream. That is his dream. And so, guys, you have to understand that sometimes the most significant work that you will do on any given Extraordinary Tuesday or Extraordinary Sunday is that conversation that you have with that hurting person in the atrium. And for me as a worship leader, man, this, this is like really, really huge. Because for me, there could be so many Sundays where I'll be on stage singing my song, go backstage and everything else like that. And I'll walk around and people are like, oh, you sound so good or whatever. And that's typically, I'm like, thanks, mom. And... Uh, <laughs> And then uh, typically after that, what I, what I can miss is the fact that that same person who I see come in the doors, who I know is going to hit me up for a conversation, my, would you pray for me? My dog is still sick, and Aunt Kathy, she had a bunion that wouldn't heal up right. Would you please pray? Like the care that you show to that person, the care that I would show to that person, I feel like it's more valuable and pleases the heart of God more than any type of like accolade get thing that I would get the opportunity to do because God cares about her and let me tell you something your church building your church is a temporal thing it's only around as long as this place is around because the church the big that's going to be around forever let me tell you what else is going to be around forever that person that you cared for that person whose work you affected. That's an eternal being. In the eyes of God, that one person, that one everlasting eternal soul is more important than the United States of America because the United States of America is not going to live forever. Right? He deeply cares about each diamond soul that he has put on the earth. And you have been called to minister to that person. You have been called to care for them. And let me tell you, in this day and age, their data is a way of caring for them. Frank Grant, thank you so much, man. Like Frank is, is one of the chief guys here at New Spring who's come up with Rock and all of the, I mean, this, it's just this huge thing. If you don't know about Rock, you've got to find out about it because it is a tool that God has put. He has given intelligence and the spirit of God and created it and given it to the church as a means of caring for that one individual that is going to last forever. You are a minister to people. You are in the ministry. Believe it. There is no such thing as an ordinary day. Because God has a mission for you. Work is his gift for a season. For the purpose of building God's kingdom. All right. Point number one. Are you guys excited about this? You want to know what point number one is? Okay, cool. Me too. I am a child of God first. I end with this, and this is the last of these three. Point number one, because this is the most important part of who you are. And let me just tell you, 
if this is not more important to you and a bigger thing to you than this is, then your ministry career will last as long as your ability to sustain it. If you don't value your relationship with God higher than your skill and your position, let me say it again. Your ministry career will last as long as your ability to sustain it. And let me just tell you, that's not a long time. 16 years worth of ministry at New Spring Church has helped me understand so many things. But one thing in particular, that God cares about my soul more than he cares about my work. And this is where this statement I told you guys at the beginning all comes home to roost. That work is not about my work. It's about God's work in me. So here's the thing. Work is a gift for a season for the purpose of building God's kingdom. Let's see what I wrote down here. By making us more like Jesus. You guys, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. You know, one of the, like if you've been around a church for a while, if you ever had to go to a funeral or anything else like that, or encountered someone who's had some tragedy happen in their life, one of the things that, one of the verses that pops up most frequently is this Romans 8.28, which you guys can all probably recite by heart, for all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, right? All things work together for good, including this bad thing that you just went, in, went into, which you got to be real careful for that. I mean, like, sometimes that's not the right thing to say to somebody right when something bad has happened, but you guys all know that because you're in the ministry. You get it. One of the most jaw-dropping verses for me is Romans 8.29 which happens immediately after this. And so I want to read you that, and I want to like camp here for just a second. For we know that for those who love God, this is verse 28, all things work together for good, and for those who are called according to his purpose. 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Okay, so... What I read from this, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So all things work together for your good. And those whom he foreknew, which is you, by the way, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Which means God has a destiny for your life. He's got a plan. And let me tell you, if God has a plan, it always goes according to plan. Because if God's plans don't go according to plan, he's not God. He can't be God if it doesn't turn out the way he wanted it. If that were the case, then he would be human. Because lots of stuff turns out the way we don't want it to. But everything turns out the way God wants it to turn out. So what that means is he's got a plan for your life specifically. And that is to be conformed to the image of his son. To be made more like Jesus. Which is why your work isn't about your work. It's about God's work in you. Because work is a gift for a season. For the purpose of building up God's church. By making you more like Jesus. The fact that you have these skills, the fact that you have these extraordinary days where you're bringing your skills to bear, the fact that all of your work is about people, all of this, all of this, all of this stuff, every single day, every single minute, every single time you log into your computer or you have a conversation with somebody at work, God is at work under it all to make you more like Jesus. And if you can see that, then you can persevere when things get difficult. Because there are going to be some days when you can't see the purpose behind what you came into work that day for. And if you get one more email from the pastor about how his computer is broken, you are going to go insane. Jesus is at work in your life. And he has a huge purpose for it. Turn to Isaiah chapter 43. I want to tell you a personal story here. The 15 years of working for New Spring Church, I, I took a sabbatical of three weeks just to take some stock of what had gone on in the last 15 years and to try to get some sense of, you know, all right, this has been an incredible run, 15 years worth of ministry. God, do you still want me to do this now? I mean, it, like, it was a time for me to rest. It was time for me to like just 
relax for a little bit, but also to connect with God. And so in my Bible reading plan for that day, on the Monday that I started my sabbatical, like, this was the passage of scriptures that came up, which is so hilarious, honestly, because I didn't, I didn't, I, that wasn't present in my mind when I took this. And just for those who, who you don't know, Isaiah 43, 18, and 19 it are the New Spring Bible verses. It's, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You not perceive it, making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Like that, so I didn't see that coming. And I've kind of been thinking, you know, my sabbatical three weeks, I know God's probably going to tell me this thing like on the last day of week number three after I've had a chance to chill. Like it all came on day number one. So this was a really, really great moment for me. So here I am. I'm reading at the top. And this is just beautiful stuff. It's in the morning. I got my cup of coffee. I'm just chilling out. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, this is verse one. Verse two, fear not for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name, you're mine when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. I'm so excited, so encouraged by all this stuff, this is awesome, fear not, I'm with you, I made you for my glory, all this stuff. I get down to number 10, and then it hits me like a ton of bricks, what I was made for, and what God is up to. And this is what some of y'all need to hear today. Verse 10 of 43. You are my witnesses, and instantaneously in, the, in that witnesses... I put my job title right there. So read it like that. You are my, what? What is your current job title? Put it right there. You are my, for me, creative arts pastor, declares the Lord, and my servant, creative arts pastor, whom I have chosen. Why? That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Why are you doing your job? Why do you have your job? Is it because the deacon board hired you? Is it somebody, like, they saw some potential in you, and they're like, hey, we have a need. We need somebody to fix our computers and servers and soundboards and everything else like that that has cables and voltage. Mm -mm. God is underneath all of it. God is underneath all of it. When you got hired, God is like, yep, and I'm going to show him, I'm going to show her who I am. You are my witness and my servant, so that you may know me and understand that I am God. Whoa! Wouldn't that have made you more excited about your job if you'd known that on the front end? Okay, we're going to hire you today to do this IT specialist job and everything is like that. What we want you to know is that the main reason we're hiring you is because we heard from the scriptures that God wants to reveal himself to you and wants you to know him, and especially that he is God of the whole entire universe. That's, what, that's why we're hiring you. I mean, that would be a little bit shocked. But, I mean, what about my skills, everything else like that? That's just something that flies by us a lot of times. But what you got to know is that work is a gift for a season intended for building up God's kingdom first by making you more like Jesus. And God has a purpose and a plan, and he wants to get to you in your job. And then when it comes to this idea of calling, like what's my calling? Why am I here? What am I doing my job? What you've got to understand is that there is a deep river running under this thing, a mysterious thing that's at work in every single day. And it has way more to do than just you making sure that you answer your emails in a timely fashion. It is about getting you more knowledge and connection with Almighty God himself. You are a child of God first before you are anything else in this world. You are a child of God first. You own everything. Don't believe me? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, all things are yours, whether the world or life or death or the present or the future. All things belong to you. Look it up. I mean, it's there. It will blow your mind. Everything belongs to you. You have a Father in heaven who has given you everything. You have everlasting life ahead of you. You have all of the promise and the hope of the future of a God who cares so deeply about you that he may have created that church that you work at just to get himself into your life a little bit more. He would do something as lavish and extravagant as that. And so what I want to tell you, each one of you, this is not a message for us. This is a message for you. God wants to get to you, to help you, to shape you, to mark you by the work that you do. It is not just some 9 to 5 o'clock that you just punch when you come in. Oh, yeah, it's just another ordinary Tuesday. No way. Now, let me tell you why this is a difficult thing sometimes for us to understand. In our society today, and for many of us, we grew up with dads who, like, you know, parents who the only time we ever got any type of, I'm proud of you, I love you, I'm... You're my child, I'm at work in your life, and I see what you're doing. The only time you ever got any of that 
was when you did something great and you excelled in the work. When you got an A on a test, when you hit a home run, when you were doing, you know, whatever good thing that you were possibly doing. And it's possible that there exists a father who wants to tell you that he's proud of you and that he loves you and that you're significant and that you matter to him before you ever even wake up in the morning and do anything good or bad. Because there's a father who saw you before the world was made and intended to make all things work together for your good because he foreknew you and predestined you to, become, to be conformed by the image of his son. So that before the world was made, before you had a chance to do anything good or bad, you have a heavenly father who saw you. And he was like, I'm going to give him some work. I'm going to give her some work. I'm going to let her experience the joy of building up my kingdom because I want him to make, I, I, I want to make myself known to that person. I, wa- I want to make you more like Jesus because if I do that, then you will come alive. You will be loved. You will flourish. You will be able to plug into this giant mystery that is the experience and this existence that we live in. There is something significant here, you guys. And that the God who made the entire universe, the vast expanse of all that infinity, is here in the finite with us today. And he wants to talk to you right now. So, Jared, if, if you could come on out and, and start playing. What, one of the things that I think is very significant is, is that this, this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that says, For all the promises are yes for us in Christ Jesus. What this means is that literally every word of that book that we hold so highly belongs to you. Every word of it. And maybe some of you today need to hear your Heavenly Father speak to you out of it. So, would you guys close your eyes for just a second? Bow your heads. After all the work that you've done, all the ministry that you're a part of, If it were to all go away, for some of you, your life would be over. Over. Because when it goes away, so does your significance. When it goes away, so does your self-worth. If it goes away, all your fears for providing for yourself, they come roaring in like this dark specter, this ghost of a father from the past who would stand over you and say, I'm so disappointed. Why aren't you good enough? And that father's a lie. Because you have a father who sent his son to the cross to buy the promises of scripture for you so that when you hear, you are my Son, marked by my love, I am proud of you. When you hear that, it belongs to you. That is God's voice in your ears this morning. Behold, look, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. So many of you guys have been working, scratching so hard to become the best, to climb the ladder, to to do whatever. You're called into this church thing now and you feel like, wow, I'm doing something that truly matters and then the, the achievement thing begins to keep rolling and it comes back and you're like, okay, I gotta get better, I gotta do this, I'm going to this conference, I'm learning, I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to move up the ladder. You gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. Who, who are you trying to please? Before you ever did anything, You have a dad who loves you, who loves you. He desperately wants to tell you, to show you how proud he is of you, to say in your ears, you are my beloved child and I am pleased with you. And it has nothing to do with your work. It has nothing to do with your brain, your intelligence or any of that stuff. It has everything to do with the fact that you are simply his. So while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to tell you just a brief story, and then we'll pray and we'll pray together and we'll, we'll close. 
I have a 13-month-old son named Gray, and he is awesome. And every night after bath time, I'm like getting him dried off and everything else like that, putting a diaper on him and stuff like that. The only song that I can think to sing to him is this song called Good, Good Father, which I don't know if any of you guys know, but anytime I start singing that to him, he starts, he looks up at me, he starts clapping his hands. I really feel like I got a picture that God wants that kind of freedom for all of us with him. That when we hear his voice, when he sings, when we experience his presence, that we respond with joy. That all of the anxiety and the worry and everything that's like that we're trying to do, like we're working so hard all the way through, like all of that would fall away for just a moment and there would be this connection, this eyes locked kind of thing that happens where we would hear and sense the pleasure of our heavenly father. And that that is the thing that truly will last forever. Not this career, not this church even, but a relationship with an eternal God and the resonation of his voice in our souls. You are mine and I love you. Father, in these moments, as we wait on you for just a minute, Would you break through? Would you break through to some man or some woman in here? And maybe for the first time, would you you speak to them? I'm not your dad. I'm not your dad. I'm not that guy. And I have called you for great work to build my kingdom. But it is all for me to reveal myself to you and to show you and to tell you I love you, and I'm proud of you. Would you do that? So we're going to have a time of prayer, everyone. I just want to invite a few people to come down front just to, to stand here and be available. We wanted to create a moment here in this session for some prayer time, for some ministry. And if maybe you have felt like just in a rut and you're coming to this conference and maybe you're trying to learn, you're trying to grow, you're trying to make some connections, everything else like that, all the other things, but God has hit you in this time and you need to pray with somebody, we want to open up these moments for that. And so as Jared continues to, pl- to play, I'm going to pray for us. And we just want to open up just a few minutes. If you want to come down and pray for somebody, this is your moment. This is your time. Because, guys, ministry is such difficult, bruising, hard work. And I don't care what position you have. And some of you today, you need to let a few things go. So would you come and pray? Father, in this time, we trust that you're moving. We trust that you are working on our hearts and ask that in these moments that you would come and speak to us, that you would move in our hearts, and that you would speak this Father word. I am pleased with you. I love you. I am proud of you. You are my child. You are my kid. And I'm at work in your life. As people are still praying, I just want to to say again and echo and keep repeating this statement from God to you because you you've got to feel this if you're going to not just thrive in ministry but to love doing it because all the he has all the power for you all of the supply, all of the resources, all of the internal stuff that you need to make every single day an extraordinary day. So hear him say it to you. Behold, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And in you I am well pleased. Hear him say it to you every day as you walk along. 
Hear him say it to you every single morning. Hear him say it to you as you go into a meeting and you come out and it's been difficult and it's been stressful. Hear him say it as you've been at the church doing something every single night of the week. That there is a God in heaven who is pleased with you and none of that work shakes down any of his view toward you. You are infinitely loved. Infinitely loved. And that can never be taken away from you. That can never be taken away from you. You can never have a day so bad where God wouldn't look on you and say, I am so proud of you. I am so glad that you are my kid. I am so glad. I am pleased with you. I am proud of you. You are doing a great job. Even on the days when you know it's not a great job. Because let's be honest, ministry is really difficult. So we need the well inside of us of that love and grace from Jesus to get us through. You are beloved children, sons and daughters of God. Let's pray together as we close. And then I'll hand it over to Scott. Father, you are so rich and so generous to us, so expansive in your love for us. It truly is as high as the heavens are above the earth. God, thank you so much for your word, for the truth of the promise, for what faith that it creates inside of us and how we are able to hear you speak whenever we read the words in that book. God, let us hear today. And let it be something that echoes and that repeats itself inside the chambers of our heart every single day for the rest of our lives. Behold, you are my beloved son, and with you I am well pleased. Let us be transformed by that word. Let the light of that truth shine out of our hearts and begin to affect everybody around us. Let us every single day make it extraordinary and understand that this work is a gift for a season for the building of God's kingdom by starting with us to make us like Jesus because that is our eternal destiny that cannot be shaken. God, let us feel and hear and experience your love every single day because it is the game changer. It is the fuel for us in all of our work. God, let us hear it. Let us experience it, Lord Jesus. We need you desperately for our work because your work is the only work. It's the only work. It's the only eternal work. God, thank you for the gift of that, for the opportunity to build your kingdom. And God, we thank you with open hearts and open arms, with this truth, knowing that all this good work, all this building, all this ministry, that you are up to something in it, inside of us, so that we might know you and believe that you are God through it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for it. Thank you. We praise you. Everybody said amen. Y'all welcome Scott to the stage.